Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be making this classic, beautiful chocolate cupcake recipe, but this is actually going to be a gluten-free and vegan chocolate cupcake recipe. Now this, just a disclaimer, because this is vegan and gluten-free, remember y'all, this is not gonna be the same texture as a regular cupcake, but it is absolutely delicious. The flavors are there, the texture is there, and literally, you're not missing an action with anything. I'm bringing to you the most beautiful, delectable, and super easy cupcake recipe here in the internet. Just mind you, my little part of the, of the world. <laughs> because obviously, guys, I just, Sometimes like I, I understand like people have like gluten-free allergies and you know they're vegan and I think that we all need to respect that and sometimes even when we go to someone's house or something like that and I know like they have a gluten allergy or they're vegan I always love to bring something for them and I feel like everybody you know should do that you know we want to make everybody feel included you know if that's at a party if that's at a gathering if that's like you know at a special event you know so I'm bringing this recipe to you guys you know so we can all join in on this deliciousness so guys I hope you enjoy this recipe and I will see you next week with a brand new video ciao oh and also guys before I even, you know, go to the next clip, all recipes and everything that I use are in that link down above or actually in the bottom link and above. Somewhere in there, I will have a link to this exact recipe with pictures and with everything that you need. Okay, <laughs> let's get to the next clip. For this recipe, we are making 10 cupcakes and I would advise for any gluten-free flour, milk, and sugar, and cocoa, this is definitely up to you and the brand that you like the most. Let's start making our mock buttermilk. And what we're going to be doing is putting in one cup of almond milk or the vegan milk of your choice into a small or medium bowl, pretty much whatever bowl you have. Next, we're going to be adding in one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And once we do this, we're just going to gently mix it all together and we're just going to set this on the side. Now, this is actually a really important step because in this recipe there is no eggs and no milk. This is really going to act as a binder and you are going to need to activate this. So I would say leave this on the side for five to six minutes so, you know, we can get those enzymes going to make it a vegan buttermilk. Just a heads up, we are going to be needing to sift all of the dry ingredients and this is the easiest way I do it. In a large bowl, add in your one cup of gluten-free flour and this is an all-purpose gluten-free flour. Next, we're going to be adding in one fourth a teaspoon of salt and I would definitely recommend a fine salt, just a fine sea salt or whatever type of salt, just make sure it is not thickly granulated. Next, we're going to be adding in half a teaspoon of baking powder, and lastly, three fourths of teaspoons of baking soda. Now, with the baking soda, for you to get three fourths teaspoon, it's basically half a teaspoon plus one fourth teaspoon to make it three fourths teaspoon. Lastly, we're going to be adding in three fourths cup of granulated sugar. Obviously the granulated sugar, whatever brand you like of granulated sugar is fine. And like you see, I'm literally sifting everything together. It's gonna be done in one bowl with one sifter. And this just makes my life just so much easier. I actually got the sifter at the dollar store but you can definitely have the sifter they really sell it everywhere like in your grocery store but this is just a really great alternative instead of sifting everything you know separately you know you just get a sifter you put everything together and you're really really done and really there's no mess next we're going to be adding in our one third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder now if you want this recipe a little bit sweeter then use the sweetened cocoa powder but i don't like my dessert very 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 sweet so i stuck with a one third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder and this is actually the last part of our dry ingredients section. Like you see, one bowl, one sifter, not, you know, a mess everywhere. And this is why I love this trick. Very simple and very easy. Now, this is a really important 
next step and we are going to be adding in our wet ingredients the first wet ingredient that we're actually going to be adding is half a cup of coconut oil or coconut butter important notice it needs to be melted completely and utterly melted we do not want any clumps of coconut because it will mess up the batter so like you see here my coconut butter it is completely melted do it in the microwave in the stovetop just make sure that you do this step and the last ingredient that we will be adding is our mock buttermilk that has been sitting on the side for five to six minutes and we are just pouring this onto the mix and then we're grabbing our whisk and we are just going to make this amazing batter now mind you this is really cool because at this point because this recipe really has no eggs or milk if you're into eating batter, I literally tried the batter and it was just so, so good. So that's another plus I would say to this recipe because it really has no eggs or milk or butter mixed together. You can just try the batter and see, you know, if you want to add a little bit of more sugar or not but this is actually my favorite way to make the recipe and like you see when i'm whisking it i'm really not going very hard with the whisking i'm just whisking it very very normally and if you see um those little rocky pebbles don't worry that is just honestly the coconut butter that has gone to room temperature and kind of clunked up but everything is going to get melted once it hits that oven so don't even worry about it Using a cupcake tray, place your cupcake liners on top and use your cooking spray of choice just so nothing sticks and everything comes out nice and clean. Next, we're going to be adding in our batter. Now, I say add a three-fourths cup full, but this really just depends on the size of your cupcake liners. Like you see, these are a bit more higher, so three-fourths cup full, but if the cupcake liners were a little bit more smaller and less of a height, obviously I would put less of a batter and obviously it would make more cupcakes. So this really just depends on your liking. Preheat your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. I'm really sorry I forgot to mention that in the beginning of the video, but we do need to get that oven crank into 350 degrees Fahrenheit so we can pop these babies in there. We are going to bake these for 20 minutes and I would definitely recommend for you to put these cupcakes in the middle rack of your oven so the cupcakes cook consistently and perfectly. Once your 20 minutes are up, the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to place them in a cooling rack. If you don't have a cooling rack like you see on the left hand side, don't worry about it. Just go and put them on your kitchen countertop in the coldest part of your kitchen counter and let them cool for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, this is really, really crucial because they have no, you know, uh, eggs and milk and butter. We don't want them sticking and we just really want them to get nice and cooled so they come off of that cupcake liner really, really easily. And now I just really want to encourage you guys to use whatever kind of toppings you like. Now I really had to have a bite because the smell was just so delicious and so divine. It just smelled like pure chocolate. Look at how moist that cupcake is. I mean, you can definitely tell from the video. It's spongy. It's very, very light. It's absolutely a beautiful vegan and gluten-free cupcake recipe. And like you see right here, I'm actually using a whipped topping that they sell at my local Trader Joe's, and that is a coconut whipped topping. And I'm adding fresh sliced strawberries. Oops, a strawberry fell over there. It's fine. We got this and we will use this. But this is definitely up to you, whatever topping of choice you like. And you know what? If you don't want a topping, don't worry about it. They're delicious right on their own. I hope you enjoyed this week's a vegan chocolate cupcake video. And I hope this becomes a great substitute for your recipe index. And give them a try and let me know how you like them. I will see you guys next week.